I've been saying for years I would love to build a screen into a light switch that could control all the smart devices in one area. Kind of like a mini wall tablet, but for every room. But the problem is that I don't really trust myself to mess around with DIY projects when it involves mains electricity. But it seems like Sonoff has answered my prayers by releasing this, the Sonoff NS Panel. A smart switch with a built-in touchscreen for whole room control. But have my original dreams for this finally been realised, or have there been any shortcuts taken? Full transparency, as always, Sonoff did send me the NS panel to check out. Now, first let's talk about the design of the NS panel. There is two different types, one for the EU and one for North America. Obviously, I have the EU version here. And the NS panel is a drop-in replacement for your existing light switch. Up front, there is two physical switches for controlling two different lights, accompanied by a three and a half inch touch display, and it's all wrapped up in this gunmetal grey surround. Finally, if you look really closely on the underside, you'll find a built-in temperature sensor. Insulation is really straightforward, just as simple as installing a regular light switch, although do be aware that the NS panel does require a neutral wire for it to work, but other than that, really straightforward. Once you turn the power on, the display will kick into life and land at the setup screen, where you basically need to download the eWe link app, create an account and add the NS panel to it. And this process works using Bluetooth and in my case it worked really well. I can't say this about some of the other products Sonoff sent me to test with, but that's another topic altogether and yeah, this NS panel was really straightforward. This is what I would call the home screen of the NS panel, which displays the date and time, current weather information, which is calculated from a location you set inside the app and it also displays the current room temperature. Now I'm not sure if this is a software bug or a faulty unit or a bad quality sensor, but my room temperature was consistently reading a full three degrees hotter than the other three sensors I have. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but assuming this will be fixed on the production version, I do like the inclusion of a temperature sensor here on the NS panel. It really does make sense. And that's because if you then swipe over, you'll get another page that has thermostat controls. And the idea here is that you link the NS panel to either another Sonoff product that is controlling your heating or AC unit, or you can also link it to one of the buttons on the NS panel, which in turn could be wired to your heating or AC unit. You can basically set the desired temperature here and then the NS panel will basically attempt to automatically maintain that temperature. Pretty neat idea, again, assuming that the temperature sensor problem is fixed. If you swipe over again, you come to a widgets panel where you can add up to eight other devices that you want to be able to control and you can add these devices from inside the eWe Link app. Unfortunately, at the moment, it seems that you can and add devices connected to the Zigbee bridge at the moment. I have been told that this will be added in a software update, but all other Sonoff Wi-Fi devices can be added. Depending on what the device is, a tap will either turn it on or off, or for other things like RGB bulbs or RGB strips, a tap will allow you to do other things like change colors and brightness as well as the usual on off. A swipe up from the bottom will give you access to the display brightness control and also time out period, where it will dim the display when it's not in use. A lot of you are probably wondering if the display goes completely off for use inside of a bedroom, and the answer is yes. Inside the app settings, you can set eco mode, which will completely turn the display off when not in use. One thing that I wish they had included here was a motion sensor. I feel like it was a bit of a no brainer to add that in and kind of a missed opportunity, which I was a little disappointed in. And that would allow you to automatically turn the display off when no motion was detected and obviously turn it back on. Bit of a missed opportunity, not sure why they didn't do that. In terms of actually using the display, this was actually where I was probably surprised the most. The downfall of a lot of products that have displays attached is that they lag, stutter, and just generally are really slow to use. But the NS panel display is actually pretty quick to navigate through and use, and that's probably because there are no fancy animations or graphics 
or anything like that that will hang it up. It's just snappy to load each page. I'm really happy that they didn't try to stuff it full of graphics and fancy animations, which would have just caused it to be slow and useless and then people would just not use it. All right, so now that we've seen how it works and what you can do with it, let's talk about price and kind of who this is for and where you would use it. So a lot of questions I was getting was people asking how this compares to something like the wall panel that I made. And to me, they are completely different use cases. The wall panel I made is more for whole home control or maybe a whole floor. It's got a much bigger display and can fit way more on it. Whereas the NS panel is more for individual room control. So the idea would be to have one of these in each room and be able to control all of the devices in that specific room. Plus, since you have those physical light switches, that means you aren't losing anything when you replace your existing light switches with the NS panel. So that's where I see the NS panel fitting in. As far as price goes, this is where things start to come apart just a little bit. The thing is, Sonoff is launching the NS panel on Kickstarter first, and so that automatically means I cannot, in good conscience, recommend you to buy this through Kickstarter because of all the risks that go along with that. However, I have been informed by Sonoff that this will go on sale through their website after the Kickstarter ends. I'm not sure what the purpose of the Kickstarter is, perhaps to gauge interest or to offer early bird discounts, but if you are interested in this NS panel, I'd wait until it goes on sale officially through their website, unless you don't mind a little bit of risk in order to get a better price. To be clear, I don't think there is much risk, if any, from a Kickstarter run by a company like Sonoff, but I do need to point this out. In terms of actual price, I don't yet have the official pricing, but I did find a pre-order listing on their website saying it will be 75 US dollars, which is around 55 pounds. Assuming this price is correct, I don't think this is actually too unreasonable for what you are getting. Finally, the two questions I kept getting constantly, and in fairness, the obvious ones that spring to mind, is does this work with Home Assistant and can I flash it with my own firmware so that it does work with Home Assistant? In terms of Home Assistant integration, it does work with the Sonoff LAN integration, but at the moment, it only allows you to control the two physical switches on the NS panel. It doesn't show the temperature sensor or anything like that, but that may just require a bit of an update once this actually gets released. As for flashing with firmware like ESP Home or Tasmota, that is something we are going to have to do a full video on, so make sure to get subscribed so you don't miss that. But Sonoff did publicly say that this is an ESP32 and a Nexteon display inside, but that doesn't always mean that flashing is easy. Fortunately, if we take a look inside of the NS panel, we can of course see our ESP32, and Sonoff have made the GPIO pins that we need to flash very accessible to get at, which I very much appreciate. Since it's just an ESP32 and a Nexteon display, I'm confident that flashing this should be possible at some point. In fact, ESP Home already supports both ESP32 and Nexteon displays, so I'm pretty sure it will only be a matter of time. Imagine being able to run a custom Lovelace dashboard on here where you could control any Home Assistant device, that is something I would love to see. But what are your thoughts on the NS panel? Could you see yourself using it for individual room control? Or would you prefer a bigger display like a wall tablet for whole house control? Maybe a combination of both? Let me know your thoughts in the comments box down below. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you find it useful. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by becoming a Patreon on Patreon and your support allows me to keep on making these videos. Thank you to all my current Patreon supporters. As always, your support is very much appreciated. Make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed and I will see you in the next video. Whew.